we know that pure substances are those which are homogeneous and which are constituted of only one kind of particles. Let's see. So we have a coal piece. Let's look inside this coal or carbon piece. You see that one piece of coal looks homogeneous. That is, it has the same constitution throughout and it is constituted of only one kind of particles, which is the carbon atom. Now let's look inside one drop of water. So you see that we are only able to observe the water molecules. So this is homogeneous and again it is constituted of only one kind of particles which is the water molecule. So in this case the pure substances are the elements and compounds. Elements are those which are made up of only one kind of particles that is they are constituted of similar atoms. So one piece of carbon is made up of similar carbon atoms and compounds are those which are made up of similar molecules. So you see that one drop of water is made up of similar water molecules. So elements and compounds are pure substances. Let's look at some other cases. We have salt. When you observe salt, you see that it looks the same throughout. So this is homogeneous and it is constituted of only one kind of particles which is the NaCl molecule. So similar molecules make up this, this salt. Similarly sugar, it has the same composition throughout and it is constituted of similar sugar molecules. And water, as you see it looks uniform, it has the same composition throughout and it is made up of similar water molecules. So such substances, they are homogeneous. Homo means same. So they have the same composition throughout their mass and they are made up of only one kind of particles. So as you see in these cases, they are made up of only one kind of particles. So such substances are known as pure substances. So the properties of pure substances is that they are always homogeneous. They have the same composition throughout their mass. They have particles of only one kind. So we have elements and compounds as pure substances. Elements are made up of only one kind of atoms and compounds are made up of only one kind of molecules. So they have particles of only one kind and they have definite set of properties. As we said, When similar particles come together, they form the pure substance. So if this particle has some physical and chemical properties, since this particle is the same as this one, so again this also has the same physical and chemical properties. So throughout the physical and chemical properties are the same. So pure substances have a definite set of properties. Let's look at some other examples. We have tea. How do you form tea? You add milk, water, tea leaves, sugar. When you mix all those, you get tea. But when you have tea, the final product, are you able to distinguish the tea leaves from milk? No, you are not. It looks the same throughout. You take any part, it has the same composition. So it is homogeneous. If you look at orange juice, we add orange pulp to water. And we get orange juice. Again, are you able to distinguish the pulp from water? No, you are not. It looks the same throughout. When a substance has the same composition or it looks uniform throughout the mass, it is homogeneous. And in these particles or in these substances, you have, you have observed that they contain more than one kind of particles. Let's see how they contain more than one kind of particle. We take one drop of tea and one drop of orange juice. Let's look inside. When you look inside one drop of tea, you see the different kinds of particles which are present. These are the particles of water, milk, tea leaves, sugar and so on. 
So all these particles, when they come together, they form T. So T is made up of more than one kind of particles. Similarly, one drop of orange juice, you see there are different particles which are present. So in this case, we have the particles of orange pulp, water, in some cases you may add sugar. So these substances, they contain more than one kind of particles. But since they look the same throughout, so they are homogeneous. Some other examples include substances which are heterogeneous. Hetero means different. So if you'll observe these cases, you'll see that you're able to make out the difference in proportion. In the first case, we have sand dissolved in water. So you're able to observe that in some parts, sand is more. In some parts, we have more of water. Some sand is deposited at the bottom. So this does not look the same or uniform throughout. Since the composition is varying in different proportions, so this is a heterogeneous mixture. In this case, we have oil dissolved in water. Again, we have more than one kind of particles. We have oil, we have water. And you see that the composition is varying in different proportions. At the top, we have more oil floating. And at the bottom, we have more water. So we do not see a uniform composition throughout. And hence, it is heterogeneous. Similarly, noodle soup, we see that it is not constant or uniform throughout. And if you have a chocolate chip ice cream, you see that in some parts there is more of chocolate chip, in some parts there is more cream and so on. So when you are able to make out the difference in the different proportion of the substance, such substances are heterogeneous. So we have a category of substances which are known as impure substances. And these impure substances are known as mixtures. So what are mixtures or impure substances? As we see in case of, let's take two examples, tea and oil dissolved in water. So in case of tea, we have more than one kind of particles, but it looks the same throughout. Therefore, it is homogeneous. Oil dissolved in water, we are able to make out the difference. So this is heterogeneous. So mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. They are always made up of two or more kinds of particles. These particles can be mixed in any proportion. While you are making tea, you can add any amount of water. You can change the amount of sugar or tea leaves. Similarly, while making a mixture of oil and water, you can change the amount of oil and water. So in mixtures, we can add the different substances in different proportions. But these different constituents, they retain their properties. What do we mean by this? So if we take this example of oil and water, what do you see? You have more of oil floating on the top and there is water on the bottom. So now, if we separate this oil, it still possesses its characters. It is still sticky in nature. Similarly, this water, if we separate this water, it possesses the same characteristics. That is, it has the same freezing point, same boiling point and so on. So these substances or the constituents in the mixture, they can be mixed in any proportion, but they retain their properties. So we classify matter into two categories, that is pure and impure. In pure, we have elements, elements like gold, which are made up of only one kind of atoms and compounds which are made up of only one kind of molecules. And impure substances are those which are made up of more than one kind of particles. They can be homogeneous like tea, orange juice or heterogeneous like sand dissolved in water, oil dissolved in water and so on. So again, recollecting the classification of matter, we have the two main categories that is pure substances and impure substances. Impure substances are also known as mixtures. The pure substances are elements and compounds. Since they have the same composition throughout, so pure substances are always homogeneous. But impure substances, they can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, as we have seen in different examples. So when you take cornflakes in the morning for breakfast, 
What do you think? When you add milk and dry fruits to it, is it a heterogeneous or a homogeneous mixture? Well, if you'll observe clearly, you might be able to make out the difference. There might be more of dry fruits in one part, there might be more of milk or cornflakes in the other. So when a substance, it has different proportions in the different parts, such substances are heterogeneous. Hetero means different. So when there is, there is not a uniform composition throughout, such substances are known as heterogeneous. So this is a heterogeneous mixture. Now if you see pure written on a bottle of ghee, does this mean that it is made up of only one kind of particles? No. Ghee is made up of more than one kind of particles. But when we use it in daily terms, pure means that it is not containing any harmful substances. But chemically speaking, it is impure as it is made up of more than one kind of particles. So do not confuse this pure with the pure that we use in chemistry.